Now then boys, what's going on? This is Yorkie here and today we're going to be starting our new series on the channel with Atletico Madrid. We did a vote and it was between Real Madrid and Atletico and Atletico won. So this is the series you guys wanted and this is the series you guys are going to get. Now Atletico are not having a great season at the moment. They're currently sat at fourth in the table, miles behind La Liga leaders Barcelona and rivals Real Madrid. There is no more Diego Simone. I don't believe his style of football gets the job done anymore. It's time for a new era era here at Atletico Madrid. Before I go through the mind-numbing training, once again, we're going to take a look at this squad and start to plan out the future of this team. And with us looking at the squad, this is your opportunity, guys. This is your chance. First of all, smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button, of course, because you're going to want to see the rest of this series and you'll get it in the notification box. And after you've done all of that, go down below and start giving me your comments for players. I love player suggestions on this channel. I, nine times out of ten, will go for the majority of them. You guys have amazing Major impact on how we build these squads. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to play 4-4-2, because we might do, but I don't intend to play it. And already, from first glance, this isn't a bad side that Atletico have. There's a few players in here that I'm extremely excited to get to use. Do look a little bit weak at right back. Oh, no, I thought he escaped Matt Doherty. He's going to be here. Do I have to use him? Was it a loan or an actual transfer? He's not even in the starting 11 at the minute, so instantly, straight off the bat, we need right backs. Because Molina is rapid from what I remember, and I'm happy to play him as the backup right midfielder. Because Correa by rights is a striker. We're also going to be linked back up with Lorente. Big fan of him. Really enjoyed using him, so I'm happy to have him at the club. I'm really happy to get to use Rodrigo De Paul as well. Heavily linked with Leeds at one point, so I did see quite a lot of his football and I'm excited. Yannick Carrasco as well should be decent. All round, this is a good team. We've got Regulon as well. I'm not against that. I'm happy to use him. I believe it's alone though. And then there's just a lot of youth players. And I'm going to be honest with you, unless you guys say that this guy's a standout at the club and you have to give him game time, are we going to get rid of the bulk of these youth players and sign our own young players for the future. One of the biggest players, though, I am super excited to get to use. We used him last year in that Barcelona career mode, and it's Memphis Depay. I got a lot out of him in that Barcelona career mode, and at 28, I think we're going to get a lot out of him here at Atletico. He does a job. He can play left wing, centre forward, or striker. I'm super comfortable with wherever we play him on the pitch. He's very tricky on the ball. Really excited to get to use him. One thing I have noted, though, and should be his note, we've got some weird players loaned in. I mean, there's some youngsters here that I'm not right sure why we've loaned them in. But Mateus Kuna out on loan at Wolves potentially could come back, but I don't know if they have a buy clause. And then Xiao Felix, of course, out on loan at Chelsea potentially coming back. I don't know Xiao Felix's relationship back here at Atletico Madrid at this current moment in time. There's clearly a reason why they've ended up letting him go on loan to Chelsea. And if he does come back and you guys want me to sell him on, we can assess that in the future. Now, one of our biggest issues for me straight off the bat is probably going to be up top because Alvaro Morata, not the biggest fan, but could have my mind changed. Change. Tends to be offside quite a bit, but he's 29. And Antoine Griezmann, although superstar of the past, never really worked out for him at Barcelona. He's back here now at Atletico Madrid, but he's 31. So how long can we sustain keeping him as our main striker? Angel Correa, though, very good. Right midfielder is probably where I'd prefer to play him and change him in the long run. He's a good striker as well, so we do have options there up top. It does look like we're already set and suited to play two up top. I'm thinking in my head that's probably how we're going to play. Now, we have a ton of players out on loan. The squad is going to be very bloated in the second season. And we're pretty good here in the centre of the park. I think the biggest thing we need to do here at the club is get rid of players that we don't like. We have 45 players on the squad list. Thomas Lamar in my mind has always been a winger. I think we definitely offer him a new contract with its expiring in 12 months. But it does look like he's being used in the centre of the park. The Paul's another one that I'd prefer to have out wide but give him creative freedom. I reckon Koke, Lorente and Kondobia will probably be the three central midfielders I rotate with. Kondogby is getting on now as well at 29 and Koke is 30. So maybe some central midfielders coming through in the future. I mean, there's a few of them here. Barrios looks like he's showing great potential. And Saul, I, I'm not sold on him. I don't particularly like him, but if Atletico fans do, we will keep him around. Didn't really have a good loan spell there at Chelsea though. We've got Samuel Lino out on loan at Valencia. He looks like he could be good in the future. And then Yannick Carrasco is probably going to be our left midfielder now at the minute. And then it's dependent who we rotate him with because there is nobody else unless we convert Lamar to probably play on that left hand side so I think that's what we need to do Lamar on the left and the Paul on the right doesn't mean that we can never use them in the center of the park Matt Doherty is a right back and is actually at the club he's not on loan we've got Witzel as well but he's 33 out of contract at the end of the year as well as Doherty and to be honest with you we're probably just gonna let him leave Diaz is another right back so instantly you know we're not blessed at right back it's a 
position we need. With an £80 budget to start off this career mode, there's definitely room for us to improve. And when it comes to centre-backs, we're not that bad. We have Jimenez, Moso, who can actually play left-back as well, and Savic. The only problem with that is that he's 31. He should be very good for this first season. And then Lodi went out on loan to Nottingham Forest, and that is probably why they brought in Sergio Regulon. Maybe someone we sign permanently if we enjoy using him. I know at Tottenham they weren't a fan, but... We could be a fan of him here. The other left back that will most likely use is Ronaldo. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm trying my best. 80 rated though, decent little left back. And then at goalkeeper, of course, we're, we're stacked. We don't need to worry about it. We've got Jan Oblak. There's been rumors about him leaving though. So if people do add comments saying you should let him go, it would be more realistic. That's what we'll do. At this current moment in time, I'm all up for giving him a new contract. Now that we've met the squad and we've seen what we need, positions that we might be weak in, it gives you guys opportunities. And don't forget, suggest formations as well that you think we should be trying to use. If think two up top though suits this team at this current moment in time i don't particularly in this window want to sell a ton of players that are first team players in real life although this is fifa it's not going to be super realistic we do like to keep a hint of realism here on the channel at least in the early seasons and we will kick off the season in this episode though i'm going to play this severe game at least and then that should give me enough time to scout players that you guys suggest and start moving for them now we do have scout reports back and lucas vasquez is one of them a veteran here in spain maybe could be useful so i'll scout him and then for any position first team quality free kick specialist this is a weird one that this one is even the option there's a few players that should be going to the retirement home i mean sergio canales iago aspas who i actually really like an 85 rated who knows could be an option all the players do seem to be holding their ratings and daniel parejo who i absolutely loved in my Real career mode and without a shadow of a doubt would be more than okay with signing him but when it comes to formations this is kind of what i'm rocking at the minute i kind of like this it gives us a cdm and a cam so it gives those options i probably will tell the CDM to drop into the centre-back position when we're in possession. I haven't fully decided that yet. We'll look at the instructions as we go down the line. And then it's Griezmann and Morata at the minute. But to be honest with you, that probably will be Depay. Or Depay will play Cam. We have those options. And I feel like Lamar and Nepal can play across those three as well. In fact, if anything, I should be swapping Lamar and Nepal at this stage and have them set up like that. Now, Lorente isn't a CDM. As we learned from our Tottenham career mode, he can happily play there. Now, board objectives are ever so important because no Nobody wants to get sacked for no reason. We are going to take a keen look at them here. The big one, brand exposure. Get 10 games with at least one goal scored in away matches this season. That should be easily achievable. And within three seasons, signed four of the best players in the world. Again, should be achievable because that's the kind of club we are. Continental, they want Champions League to reach the fight. I mean, I'm not sure that's going to happen this season. Domestic, they want us to win the league and the cup. We could be, we might get sacked here in season one. To see in those objectives, we could be in trouble. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let my scouts do some of the work and try and get us to this severe game i'll come back with any transfer offers that we get again this first episode really is just setting up the career mode and then getting the feedback we need from you boys but i do want to get the first game of the season in so we can see how the squad lines up i'm gonna to have to go through now and do a ton of training just minding my own business doing the training and along come our arch rivals real madrid with a transfer offer for Antoine Griezmann. And although I would maybe consider letting him go, not without your guys' feedback, not to our rivals, Real Madrid, and definitely not for 43.5 million, when we can get up to 67, it reckons. So with the training now complete, we can actually start moving forward. And we're starting to see some transfers come in. We've got one here from Leeds United for Angel Correa. It's an interesting one because it's a swap deal now. We've already rejected one from Aston Villa, giving us Matty Cash. And although we need a right back I, I don't need a right back that much kind of like Correa though and I'd like to keep him around but Brendan Aronson is a very good young talented American cam still don't feel like we could accept a deal like this without your guys feedback also working on some position changes obviously Condogbia is going to be changed so that he can play CDM so that's the position we're going to be using. And he also instantly goes up. Another thing to note, we are actually going to use Molina as a right back. He's the best player who could play at right back. And we've already got other players that can play right mid quite comfortably. I think that's the decision. I'd still like another right back because I don't like Doherty. I just, I just don't like him. So we could still do with another right back. Transfer offer coming in now for Jimenez. And it is from Bayern Munich. Now, usually in this situation, I really would entertain this kind of bit. I think since it's the first episode and the first window until we have the feedback, I'm banging on about feedback a lot but your guys input is a huge part of these career modes i'm not gonna let anyone big leave unless it's someone i actually don't want at the club here we go then boys first game of the season coming up against sevilla we're away i think pretty much all the spanish stadiums are in the game which is super cool another reason for us to do spain i think germany might be next after this one because i'm pretty sure they're heavily licensed 
maybe France. Who, who knows? I can't see France doing too well on the channel, if I'm being honest. But I feel like this Atletico Madrid one should be a good one because when we look through the team, especially with how old the squad is, there's actually a lot of work here to do for Atletico to put them back on top and hopefully build them a side that can consistently stay on top for a while. Now, I'm pretty sure in years gone by, Sevilla are considered quite a strong side. I don't know if they're as strong as they used to be. They might have fallen off a little bit, but I remember using them on Football Manager about three or four years ago. I think we did a series on the channel with them, with Football Manager, and they were actually one of the top four, five, six teams maybe in that pack anyway of teams fighting at the top of the table. That was their starting 11. This is ours. I don't know how often I will show you the starting 11s like this. This might be a one-off. We might get flagged for this. So it's not the smartest move on YouTube to do this sort of first video because it's usually the most popular one. But we're doing it. It looks good. It looks sleek. It looks sexy. Let's see how we perform with this squad. And straight off the bat, let's show you the instructions. So this is the tactical instructions we're going to be using. Pressure on heavy touch. I just like to play that way. We're going to get our team. 60-60 width and depth. Don't know how that's going to work. We might drop depth down a little bit. I don't want to leave ourselves too open fast build up and balanced for now i'm not gonna go with getting behind just yet and then 56 on the width i feel like we need bodies wide but i'm not so sure if we're gonna stick with that in terms of instructions not massive changes Morata will be the striker that gets in behind although we'll probably be offside quite often and griezmann will be our false nine could be completely wrong but i feel like that's the best option for those two correa will be getting into the box but has a free role there at cam the paul cut inside as well as lamar and my fullbacks are going to overlap because for this we're going to drop to a back three when we're at attacking. Our attacking support with Lorente will be dropped between defenders and he's going to play as the deep line playmaker. Now, I haven't used deep line playmaker before so I'm intrigued to see how this works but dropping in between the defenders is absolutely brilliant on this year's FIFA. I've been using it with a Blackburn Rovers save and it has worked a treat. Now opening day in La Liga, Atletico Madrid at least need a top three finish this season. You imagine or your boy might get sat. They want us to win the league this year. I don't see that being the case, but top three, surely. We didn't get pulled for the foul, and Rafa Mia's going to make it 1-0 severe in eight minutes. I mean, this is a huge mistake from Oblak, but I thought I was going to be given a foul. Opening day calamities, but do you see there, there was a foul. It even flashed at the screen as if we could take the foul. So I just passed the ball away and we didn't get the foul. And Rafa Mir goes through and scores. Definitely not how you want to start on opening day, but this is actually what happens. So Savic's trying to play the ball back, which I do. And then Rafa Mir slides in on him after, which is actually a foul. And the referee gives it, or at least gives play on. I instantly pass the ball out with Oblak terribly. And while Savic is trying to get up off the ground, they just play it straight back into Rafa Mir and he scores. I definitely think that's a little bit of a cheap goal for us to concede at the start of this series. But if that's how we're going to be done by the refs, that's how we're going to be done. Let's see how this team now reacts after conceding early. And hopefully, we can do well. Now, I'm not sure about pace for Griezmann. Morata actually has quite a decent amount of pace. And hopefully, we'll be able to play that role for me of getting him behind. But in terms of Griezmann, I'm not sure he's going to be the same in that regard. And we are having a rough start here. Pops that one up to Correa. Correa will play it into the pole. I didn't really get the movement I wanted, but now Morata can play in Griezmann. And again, with Griezmann's pace, I'm not sure. And it doesn't look like Griezmann at the minute has the pace to beat them. Play that one over the top to Griezmann. And again, we're kind of seeing what might be the issue was his pace. But Griezmann goes through and it's over the bar. Campos now for Sevilla. They don't really have anyone in the box, so he's going to have to bring it back. In fantastically against the fullback there, Ronaldo. And this is good play into Rafa Mia. Holding strong. Fernando now. This is not a bright start, but if you've never watched a series here, I never have a bright start, let's be honest. It is extremely rare that we get off to a good start. That's the halftime whistle, and it's not looking good. I don't know how long we can go before we bring on Memphis Depay, because if I'm being honest with you, he's probably going to be the difference maker for me in this squad early on. I am adjusting to this new formation and where players are going to be when making runs, but so far, we are not getting anything out of this game. And Morata is making a run. Am I going to find him? I might just find him. Oh, my God. What a save from the keeper. And is actually going to go beyond his man. Rafa Mia. Don't let him get off the shot. Oh, my God. All Black's beaten. And Rafa Mia makes it 2-0 severe. It felt like we were getting back into the match. And this is so frustrating. Get the block in. Oh, get the save in from Black. All Black. Not too sure. I feel like All Black should have saved that, actually. He doesn't. And that's all that matters in this. And... Frustratingly, we find ourselves still in this horrendous position. Do I find Morata in a better position? I don't. And just like that, we're 2-0 down. And I don't think we're going to squash a two-goal deficit in this one. We don't feel like we're playing well enough. We get back into the game was the question. And we've had a few opportunities and made nothing from them. And I don't think we're going to be able to 
Get rid of a two-goal deficit. Although that's a good ball into Morata. And if he's onside, that will count. It's 2-1 now. And there is chance. Pereira has not existed in this game, really, at Cam. It's obviously not the position for him. And it's just not worked out for him. Let's bring on Memphis now and see if he can have an impact. And instantly, Memphis to Pai. Oh, if he gets that ball in behind. He does win the second ball. He doesn't keep it, though. Fernando in there to clear it. Can we find a second? A draw here from the position we've been in two goals down would show the kind of fight we're going to have from the lads this season. Molina with the ball in. Nice. Oh, horrendous. Morata is in acres. Oh, we're going to win this back, though. The pie now. Up to Morata. Gets that down to Griezmann. Oh, what a save. We have created chances. We haven't scored them. And it's absolutely devastating. Oh, my God. That's off the line. Can I win the header in? I can. Morata. Oh, you've got to catch it cleaner. He nearly goes over the line there. And out of nowhere, Sevilla might have a counter-attack. And this is really unfortunate because I genuinely thought we were about to make it 2-2. And we don't. But is there one last chance in this game? There might be as I find Griezmann. Griezmann just doesn't have the pace. Can he find the finish? Griezmann doesn't. Can we slide it home? We can. It's going to be 2-2 right at the end. Rodrigo de Paul. And we managed to rescue a point from this game. Absolute drama on the opening day of the season. That's going to be heartbreak for Sevilla and their fans. De Paul finds the back of the net. Griezmann, though, I thought his shooting just would be better. I thought he'd be able to bang those power shots into the back of the net. Wasn't going to happen. We get a little bit lucky with the ricochet, but DePaul was following it up, and that's what you need to do. And I cannot believe that we are going to get away with this one. But Morata with a goal. Definitely should have scored another. But he's going to be 2-2 on the opening day. What a banger of a first game for this series. Before we go, we'll take a quick look at the transfer hub. We have transfer listed slash loan listed a lot of players. I mean, like, we need to get anybody else out on loan. There's already so many players out of this club. At some point, we're going to have to make some hard decisions. We need to cut this squad down. It is too big. And we're too saturated in positions that we don't need. We only really have three good centre-backs, so I could do with another one of them. Right-back's a bit of an issue. And in terms of wingers, we don't have any. But we've got about... 15 central midfielders this is a problem we have about eight attackers out on loan and only three at the club so we do have some serious issues in terms of this squad and the balance that we have with it right now but i basically just filled this list with mainly young players that i feel like could be good for us you of the highlighted players would probably be gonzalo inacio i really like him at sporting i feel like atletico have had links with portuguese clubs in the past like jao felix and stuff so maybe we could use that grimaldo left back or left midfielder the fact that he can play the both is great but the injury prone trait is putting me off him a little bit i really like the idea of florentino but unfortunately he's already made a transfer to wolfsburg and the main one on this list for me is who we would bring in to play up top and that is gonzalo ramos i thought he was brilliant at the world cup i would really like to use him i got to use him last year and he was a beast i think i even made an individual video on him not to get me want feedback but i believe this guy could be massive for the team considering the age of our strike force at the moment and i'm not sold on correa he could be a brilliant sign in but we're not going to do any transfers just yet we want to leave it here this is the setup episode we'll leave it with ourselves sat sixth in the league thank you very much for watching this one lads if there's new people around here i really do appreciate you hitting the subscribe button we'll be back with the next episode very soon we're going to wait now hear your feedback and then we're going to build this team hopefully I think top four La Liga this season. And then just try and have a run in the cup competition. Take care and I'll see you for episode number two.